This week's buffalo hunt with Lyndon Stanton of Imbala Bala Safari started just like any other one. Uh, I had my 470 double, we went to the range, we sighted in, everything was fine. Uh, got on the herds, looked at buffalo, saw some younger Daga boys that were you know, almost there. But we were really looking for something old and something special. So, if not a scrum cap bull, we wanted something worn with some age and heft to them. Day four, we find the single track of a lone Daga boy going into some thick bush and uh, heading toward water. Now, Lyndon's got a couple of trackers that are exceptional. JB and Kulu, I mean, I've, I've had the privilege of taking five different Cape Buffalo across the, my career, and I've seen some good trackers, but these guys, they really, they're, they stand out. So, on the track we go. And, lo and behold, about 10 o'clock in the morning, we actually jump the buffalo in the river bed. A little bit of mayhem ensues, people are close together, and while the buffalo was crossing right to left for me, uh, there was no shot, or at least no safe shot. If I was alone, I could have swung on him and then put him down, but long story short, I didn't. So we see the buffalo, polished bosses, nice width, massive body, old buffalo, tips worn off, uh, one was even cracked on the end, and it, I mean, it was just, it was the buffalo we wanted. Well over 40. So. The two trackers get on his track, and uh, as you've seen here in Makuti, the terrain is rather steep. It's rocky. It's arduous, and this guy just ran. He he was a he was a runner. He took a runner over mountains, down through the thick grass, into river valleys, and so on and so forth. Uh, almost lost his track when we got on top of a real steep hill. Sitting and relaxing for a minute just to take it all in, figure which way he would go, we actually spotted the buffalo probably 350, 400 yards out. He walks out and he, he's magnificent again and just lays down underneath this particularly individual green tree that stood out as a landmark. So we got to put a stalk on him. Down off the hill we go. Uh, wind is starting to get a little shifty and I mean look old buffalo or old buffalo for a reason they're smart so he knew where to lay down and he knew how to work the wind and we had to get down in a river valley quietly where the grass was extremely thick and noisy and you know with interspersed with dead leaves very crunchy up on another ridge to try and find him and in the meantime he had moved off slightly so when we got to the tree where we knew quote unquote he was he wasn't there at that point in time, you know, things got much thicker. Vegetation all over our heads, you probably had 10 yards of visibility at most. Luckily enough, JB picked the track up again. Further up the hill, not even 200 yards, we spot the buffalo. Fantastic. All is well. Lyndon and I, at that point in time, take over for the trackers. We get into about 45 yards and we've got a little break, you know, two, two branches kind of did one of those things where we had a, maybe a, a two foot by three foot window. And he said, lean on the tree and smoke him. And I, I did exactly that. I, I leaned the 470 that I know so well up against the tree and... It was so thick that the camera really couldn't focus on myself and the buffalo at the same time, so we had no idea where the impact was. But as it turns out, the bullet didn't hit vitals. Uh, it must have hit a branch somewhere along the way. I've replayed the shot a million times in my mind, and it was just behind the foreleg, one third up the body as I've done many times before. Um, but as it goes with hunting, 
it didn't go right. So we found a piece of fat, and I, I think that the bullet hit a branch and went a little forward of the vitals and, and through the brisket. Uh, Lyndon ripped off a shot really quick at him. We heard the bullet skip off, and we knew that that was a miss. It just it didn't connect, and we did have blood. So we started the tracking job. Did you see it, Katie? tracked him that night for probably a mile, mile and a half, and the track was clear, he wasn't limping, bleeding started to become more and more, you know, sparse, and due to darkness we had to call it. Everybody felt confident we'd get on him in the morning, no problem, and we'd have him. Okay, so we spent the morning uh, tracking the buffalo I wounded yesterday. This has turned into what I call a buffalo hunter's nightmare. But if you hunt buffalo enough, it's going to happen to you. However, uh, we still have his tracks. Uh, I think the wound is superficial, but um, we're going to go in and try and pick him up uh, and recover as best as possible. And we found where he had laid down in a thick patch of riverine bush, and we could see the bush move, but it was, you know, 6.15, and here in Zimbabwe in August, it's, it's getting dark. We, we knew he was wounded and cantankerous. The, the trackers felt, you know, confident they could get onto him, so we pull out again for a second night of agony for yours truly. Day three, we pick his track back up at about, like I say, 7.15, and we work him even more, and, and you can see where he goes and where he's feeding, and the, you know, the blood had dried up. We could see his, his feces, and there was no blood in that, so there was no gut shot, and I, you know, at this point in time, we were pretty confident that this shot wasn't mortal. What ended up happening was at noontime on day three, he crosses the tar road, which is the boundary of our concession, and, well, we can't follow. So he's, he's gone to history. Uh, lesson learned here. An iron-sided double is a fantastic weapon for hunting. Uh, in hindsight, Monday morning quarterback, maybe if I had a scoped rifle, I may have seen there was a small stick in the way. Again, it's only 45 yards, but as you can see in the footage, it's extremely thick. And my, my attention is front bead and on the animal's vitals. And unfortunately, that level of, of attention sometimes draws your eye away from so, even the, something as big as your pinky or a pencil can deflect a bullet. Uh, don't get me wrong, I drew blood, I still paid the trophy fee, and that's the way it works here, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Will I ever forget this buffalo? No, no, he's, he's gorgeous. He's every buffalo I ever wanted to have. Uh, it, will I learn a lesson? Yeah, you know. This is, it comes with hunting. It wasn't any negligence, excuse me, negligence on my part. I didn't do anything hasty. I held the way I would hold on any buffalo. I guess the lesson here is that things do go wrong and it is part of hunting. So, you know, if you prefer taking everything out of the mix, maybe a scoped rifle is, is the way to go for you. Uh, I've always said that, you know, the double rifle, while it's a fantastic weapon for dangerous game, it does limit your shot opportunities, you know, and it comes with a, a different set of skills and, and the, its own pitfalls, if you will. But uh, I hope that buffalo is, is healthy and hale, and I hope he passes his genes for years to come.